The sponsor of this video is LAS Concealment. LAS Concealment makes a variety of Kydex holsters and mag carriers. They have a ton of different options and styles for you to choose from for numerous firearms, whether it's with a light or without a light. I want to thank LAS Concealment for sponsoring this video. You can hit them up down below at the link provided. It's lasconcealment.com. And thanks to LAS Concealment for sponsoring this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. I want to do this video here to uh, follow up on the victory in New York, first and foremost, that happened last night. Didn't see that video? Watch it. Parts, most of the Concealed Carry Improvement Act that Kathy Hochul and the tyrants in New York forced down the throats of New Yorkers in the immediate aftermath of the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin decision. Most of that bill was squashed via Judge Sudeby putting a preliminary injunction uh, in effect, effective immediately yesterday. Um, now, where do we go from there? I will tell you that uh, the state of New York will probably uh, appeal this to the Second Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals, right? Um, and then it will be up to the appellate court, whether it's a three-judge panel at first or eventually will go to a, an en banc panel. But the, the circuit court will... Uh, decide whether they're going to let the injunction stay because this law obviously violates the, the Constitution. In fact, Judge Sudeby said that as well. Um, or they will reverse some of it or all of it. So that remains to be seen. But rest assured, New York is going to appeal. Uh, they, I, don't, I haven't seen it this morning yet, but I'm sure that they will. But I want to let people know what the judge did let stay active in New York uh, because some of it the wording he used and some of the laws that he found on the books, I guarantee, guarantee you, you will see these pop up again, specifically in these laws that are being challenged across the country post-Bruin. So the first one that the judge let stand were character references. And I'm going to read from my notes here because I want to be accurate. But he found several instances of laws where uh, even colonies required character references. Now, we know that anything that is a, an, a, an infringement, a restriction upon the Second Amendment, thanks to, uh, to the Supreme Court, has to pass the text, history, and tradition test, right? That's the only thing it has to pass. If it's not in the plain text of the Second Amendment, it must be clearly within the uh, history and tradition of this country in and around the time the Second Amendment was adopted in 1791. And that's why I want to bring this to your attention, because we're going to hear these again. Um, so... He found these items that were in, uh, in place at the time of ratification of the Second Amendment in 1791 and the 14th Amendment in 1868, okay? So at least five colonies had laws uh, based on the reputation-based perception of an individual. And that was Pennsylvania, Maryland, North Carolina, Virginia, and New York. New York. Uh, also, three historical statutes, one from a state and two from cities that required an applicant to provide uh, character references to be permitted to carry a gun. And the judge said, together, these eight laws, five of which came from states in 1777, including Virginia, uh, that was enough for him to say that it would more than likely pass the constitutional scrutiny uh, for character references because they were around that time of the ratification and adoption of the 2nd and the 14th. Also interesting is he left the training requirement in, as well as the in-person meeting with law enforcement or the licensing official. So uh, 18 hours of classroom, two of which must be at the range. That is all staying uh, put as well, as well as uh, public playgrounds and daycares, libraries, nursery schools. Uh, those are all staying as well because the judge said that they were close to historical prohibitions to carrying uh, at school grounds, and he th also said that they were enough to potentially pass constitutional scrutiny. But what's interesting is the playground section. Playgrounds were in were in Judge Sudeby's temporary restraining order that came out a couple weeks ago that led to where we are today at this hearing that happened yesterday. So he gave it first uh, in the temporary restraining order and then thought again and didn't do it here in the uh, preliminary injunction. Now remember, pre preliminary injunctions are extremely hard to get. You only get them if, you know, and I'm going to surmise this, you're more than likely going to win the case on its merits going forward. Um, and 
something that can't be fixed by throwing money at the problem. So for the judge to give this preliminary injunction out, it's going to be interesting how the Second Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals addresses this case. Now, Judge Sudeby also said uh, that he would be amendable to stopping the in-person meeting as well. Um, so we'll see where this lawsuit goes from here. I guess you haven't seen the end of it, but I'm hoping that this kick uh, to the Second Amendment gonads of Kathy Hochul uh, or to the Second Amendment gun control area of Kathy Hochul is enough to uh, to make her lose today in her bid to uh, be elected as governor of New York. Um, so I will watch this closely. If you want to stay in the know, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button down below. You can do it right now. It takes two seconds. I'll wait. All right, now hit that thumbs up button and share the video and be sure you comment down below. Get this information out because YouTube did a hell of a job stopping that video last night. Uh, even though I did it live and entitled it Breaking News, uh, they did a hell of a job suppressing that video. So if y'all could help me get this out and get that video out by sharing it, I would greatly appreciate it. And with that, guys and gals, hope you have a fantastic election day. Get out and vote. Bring your family members, your neighbors, your friends out to vote. There should be no excuse. Uh, we need the numbers. <laughs> we really do need the numbers. Be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. Because that's what the Second Amendment is all about. That's what it's put in place for. And that's what it will remain in place for. I'll see you on the next one, y'all. Take care. Thank you.